top of the morning to ya. Wait, that's not my line. Damn it! What's up everyone, it's Alex. Today we're gonna check and change the spark plug in my Royal Enfield 650 motorcycle. Not because I need to, but because I wanna show you guys how to do it in case you don't know. Disclaimer, I know there's a lot of you out there who know how to change spark plugs, that's cool. This is directed at people who don't know how to do it. This is a very, very simple little maintenance check and item that you can do very easily on your own that I really don't think most people need to pay someone else to do. Especially if you have an older carbureted motorcycle, this is especially handy because a lot of really small issues with carbureted motorcycles can be alleviated by being able to check and clean or change your own spark plugs. Being able to check your spark plugs also is a really good way to check and see if your motorcycle's fuel to air mixture is right. You know, if your bike is running way too lean or is running way too rich on your fuel mixture, your spark plugs are one of the easiest ways to tell you that. So without further ado, let's just get into it real quick. I'm going to run through the process of checking and changing spark plugs on most motorcycles. Another quick disclaimer. There are a lot of bikes out there with a lot of bodywork and some other different setups on them. There may be other things that you need to remove from your motorcycle to get to your spark plug. Some bikes you have to take fairings off, some bikes you have to take the tank off. Sometimes there is a lot more to it. Thankfully for us, Royal Enfield was really, really nice and made it really easy to get to the spark plugs on this. So it makes it a really quick and easy thing for me to show you. So here we go. How to check and change the spark plugs in most motorcycles starring my Royal Enfield Continental GT. Okay, before we get cranking on this, here's a few tools that we're going to need. Most spark plug changes can be accomplished with just a standard ratchet and a deep well socket. If you get a deep well socket that has the rubber stopper in them, I don't know if you guys can see that, it makes it a lot easier. You can do this with any appropriately sized deep well socket, but trust me on this, go spend a couple bucks and get one that's actually made for doing spark plugs that has the rubber stopper because that's gonna make your life way easier. We don't need an extension for this one, but it makes the clearance better, so I am gonna use a short extension. I can get to the plugs on this bike without one, but a lot of people are gonna need one to get way into deeper recesses for spark plugs, so we are gonna use an extension. On this bike, the socket is 16 millimeter or 5 8 depending on where you are, but they are different sizes for different bikes. That is a very, very quick Google search to tell you for your motorcycle what size you're gonna need for your stock plugs. Also, I wanted to mention real fast, we're not gonna use this, but if you don't have any of this stuff with you and you are in a bind, most of your basic BS motorcycle toolkits that come stock with bikes will have some kind of cheap little crappy setup for doing spark plugs. This is a standard little spark plug wrench that came out of a crap BS stock motorcycle toolkit. Um, so it can work in a pinch. It's not ratcheting, so it's not as nice. But if you're going to do that, you'll follow the same instructions we're going to go through here, except you'll just slide that down on your plug. And then you should have one of these little wrench doohickeys in your toolkit as well. This goes over the other end of it and can be used to take the spark plug out. So that can work in a bind, okay? Okay, so just so you guys can see how easy this is, I'm going to do this one-handed while I hold the camera and film with the other hand, okay? So we're looking at the 650 Twin Royal Enfield right here. They were really nice and made these really easy to get to. See how the entire cylinder is cut out to give easy access to this. Here we've got our plug wire and the spark plug is underneath it. So all you're going to do to start off with is you're going to take this plug wire and you're going to give it a nice, gentle, yet firm tug away from the spark plug. You're going to feel it come off. Okay, just pull that out of the way. And we're looking down at our spark plug, all right? So then all we got to do take our socket and we've made sure that it is set to loosen and we're going to just slide it down in there and get it clicked on there real nice and we're just going to loosen that spark plug once it gets to a certain degree of looseness my ratchet will stop clicking and I'll show you what then I do it'll come a lot of the way out just that way Okay, once it reaches a certain point, I'll actually just take the socket off and I'll just spin it by hand because it's got really long threads. But once it reaches a certain point, you can do it way faster if you just take that off and just spin it by hand. You'll feel it come loose. And then the whole plug will come right down and you're staring down on top of your cylinder. So that's the spark plug. This looks pretty good. Um, when you're looking at your spark plugs, for those of you who don't know, especially if you have a carbureted motorcycle, with fuel injection, it's not as big of a deal, but it, it still can 
indicate issues. If you have fuel mapping issues or something like that, your bike, even with fuel injection, can run slightly lean or slightly uh, rich or something like that. Um, if you have fuel injected issues and you're you're having problems, you're probably going to have to take it to a mechanic or someone that can plug it in and do a diagnosis unless you have the software. But on a carbureted bike, if you pull your plugs, if you're having running issues or anything, you pull your plugs. If the If that plug is super black and nasty looking, then your bike is probably running way too rich and it needs to be a little bit leaner, which you can look up how to do all that, adjust your fuel screws, etc. Or you can take it to a competent mechanic if you are not so mechanically inclined. But if your plug looks super black and nasty, then you're running too rich and you need to address that. On the flip side, if the whole top of that plug has kind of a whiteness or a, a milky haze to it, then you're probably running too lean uh, and you need to address that issue as well. This is just kind of like a basic looking plug. This is what I'm used to seeing out of most bikes that are running pretty good. This bike might be running slightly on the lean side. With some fuel injected bikes, they do that to pass US emissions, unfortunately. Um, so it might be running slightly on the lean side, but overall that looks pretty good. So we don't need to change these. I just thought I would show you guys this, you know, just, just doing it for the heck of it, just for you guys. So, And then to put your new plug in, you would just take your brand new plug, pop it in here exactly the same way. We're gonna stick it right back down in there. Feel it nestle down in the hole. Reverse the process. And I'm gonna do it with my hands until it starts to get a little bit tight just to save myself some time because it's a lot faster than using the wrench for the whole thing. So it gets a little bit tight. Take my wrench, switch it over. If it'll cooperate, we're gonna click it in there. And I'm just gonna just snug it down just a little bit. When you start getting pretty decent resistance, stop. A lot of people think you need a torque wrench to do spark plugs, and I know some people are gonna disagree with me. I am gonna get some comments saying, don't you dare do spark plugs without a torque wrench. You need to have a torque wrench. You don't need to have a torque wrench. Just do it until they're snug. Do not keep tightening once it is snug. You will start stripping out. You do not want to strip a spark plug out, okay? Put your plug back, wire back in. Just get it lined up, push in. You will hear and feel it click like that. Just make sure it is. Yeah, you will hear and feel a nice, audible, satisfying click when it connects right with the head, and we're done. We have now checked, inspected, and replaced the spark plug in our Royal Enfield 650. That's it guys, that's all there is to a basic spark plug check and change. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there will be bikes out there that have more involved in checking and changing spark plugs. There are a lot of bikes where you have to take stuff off of them to get to the plugs. There are some bikes that have different proprietary special kinds of plugs. There are even bikes that have two plugs per cylinder. So there will be more involved processes for fancier, more involved motorcycles, but I want to cover just some basics just so my newer riders and people that want to work on their bikes themselves and not pay someone else to do it can start learning this stuff. Google is a magical thing. It will tell you the size wrenches you need. It will tell you the size plugs you need. Your owner's manual is also really helpful for all of this. If you're going to work on your own bike, you need to have an owner's manual. And I would really suggest you get the service manual to that motorcycle as well. Spend the 60 bucks or whatever it is. It varies by make and manufacturer. Get you a service manual too because it's going to tell you a lot of stuff as well. But that was it, just some basics, just wanted to throw that out there. If you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments. I'm Alex, peace.